Dr. Chris Simpson here, Category Manager, here to talk to you today a little bit about uh, the road bikes uh, that we stock in the stores. Now, road is a category that's all about performance, uh, so I'm going to step you through the different types of performance road bikes that we have in the store. So that starts everything from the, the recreational bikes we classify for a little bit of riding on the road, uh, through to the sport level bikes, which are a little bit more serious, right up to the, the super light, super high performance road bikes. So, Today we're going to step you through each of those categories to understand from a customer's point of view the differences with each of those models. Now that we've introduced the different styles of road bikes, we want to talk to you a little bit more about the recreational style. So recreation, as the name suggests, is more of the entry into the road category. Uh, maybe for someone that hasn't had a road bike before and progressing from a, a hybrid bike or a flat bar road bike and wanting to, to have a bike that goes a little bit faster, uh, but also being their first road bike, they want to sort of get into the road cycling. So recreational road bike, like all road bikes, firstly they're, they're designed to be very quick. So the bigger diameter wheel, uh, obviously with a skinny narrow tyre, allows it to, to scoot along very fast. The gearing of the bike supports being able to achieve a much higher speed. The weight of the bike, obviously a road bike is much lighter than any other styles of bike, so therefore it, it scoots along a lot quicker and a lot easier, uh, especially say climbing a hill. Um, and obviously those, those differences make the bike uh, c pretty committed in its use only for on, on sealed surface riding. So they're not the type of bike that you would take off-road at all. Uh, but I think people that buy on a road bike understand it's all about speed, all about performance and they're looking to get the most out of their cycling. So to explore the, uh, the recreational style of road bike first, what makes that sort of different for a customer? Firstly, the, the, the look at the geometry of the bike. So the first thing you'll notice is that uh, the handlebar height and the saddle height, even though they are adjustable, they're at a fairly sim similar level. So with a, with a road bike, typically they're quite committed in their riding position for both aerodynamic and ergonomic advantage. So for someone that hasn't come to a road bike before, you know, having the handlebars where they're not having to bend over so much allows them to be a little bit more comfortable and, and break into that position. Uh, so to do that, you know, they increase the height of the, what they call the stack height of the front of the bike here. So uh, comparing to other road bikes, this, this height here is a little bit higher. Obviously the customer can adjust and go down if they need to, but it provides a great starting position for when they get into the road cycling. Looking at the frame too, the frame is typically a little bit shorter in the top tube again, which again uh, reduces the length the customer has to bend over to reach the handlebars, so again to make it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, also, if you look at the wheelbase of the bike, uh, it, it's actually quite long uh, and that provides quite a lot of uh, stability uh, and also confidence for the rider uh, with a road bike. They're a much faster bike than any other type of bike to ride. So for someone coming off a, a mountain bike or a hybrid, they might find them a little bit fast and also a little bit unnervy to ride. So having that longer wheelbase provides them to be a little bit more stable at speed and certainly provide a lot more confidence as they're getting used to the bike. Other distinguishing things that uh, you would find on an entry level road bike uh, would, would typically be triple front chain rings. Um, and so you can see down here that uh, compared to some other road bikes, you actually have three sets of front gears. Uh, and then depending on the spec of the bike, you might have anywhere between seven and, and 10 on the rear. But having that tripled front chain ring obviously offers an extra gear uh, option uh, for the customer. Again, you know, as they get into road cycling, uh, you know, and the gearing of the bike is typically quite quite tall, quite designed for that top level speed and, and, and loses some of the hill climbing ability. So a customer might be a little bit concerned that their fitness might not be supportive of that. Um, so having the extra range of gears obviously provides some assistance if they do need to go through some hilly terrain. Other than that, obviously typical road bike distinguishing features, you know, you, you have the drop handlebar which is sensational in providing multiple riding positions, you know, up here uh, on the flats, onto the hoods, down into the drops and so the, the idea of having those multiple positions is on a longer ride it breaks up, uh, you know, uh, the ride by offering multiple positions for you to stretch out and find a position that you're comfortable in, you know, especially on, a, as I said, a long ride. Uh, you've got the integrated brake and gear lever, where you can see here that not only is it the brake uh, lever, but also the gears are activated from the same control, which provides certainly a lot more safety uh, in the sense your hands aren't deferring from the handlebar at all to, to, to control the bike, and obviously provides a much greater performance because you, again, you, you're, you're on the bikes pedaling away uh, without any risk of um, you know, losing control with taking your hands off. 
Um, other, other features that customers typically look for obviously is weight to the bike. So you know, coming off a hybrid bike or a mountain bike where they've got a little bit more strength built into them for riding over different terrain, ropes trim out so the bike lighter. Um, most bikes uh, will become aluminium and uh, aluminium you know, is nice stiff material, it's nice and light, it's not going to rust so it's nice and durable. Um, being stiff though, it, it's a bit bumpy to ride, you tend to feel all the bump, so a lot of customers really do look for a, a carbon fibre front fork on the bike like this one has. Uh, carbon fibre is brilliant at absorbing road shock and, and so you find that it actually really softens the ride up a lot uh, in the front of the bike and, and the great thing about that is that you know, you're know you getting less vibration through the front of the bike through your wrists and arms and so certainly a lot more control and again for that longer ride you know, you're not as tight and as, as worn out at the end of it. So. In essence, the recreational road bike is designed for speed and performance, uh, but it's done so in a way that you know, introduces the customer to road cycling in a comfortable way. Um, you know, it's, it's not scary and daunting. You know, uh, it's just a, a really nice bike to get out and do some leisurely riding on the weekend. So we just covered the recreational style of road bike, which as we said is the, the entry level road bike for someone that's maybe coming off a, a flat bar road bike or a hybrid bike, something a little bit more recreational and looking at getting into road cycling. We're now looking at the sport level bike, which certainly takes it up a notch in levels of performance. Uh, and some of the distinguishing facts of the recreational bike we looked at before uh, are now a little bit more towards the performance aspect. So firstly, the first thing we looked at before, you'll notice that the saddle to handlebar height has changed. So the front end of the bike becomes a little bit lower and the saddle, uh, if you're sitting in the saddle, you would, you'd need to reach down a little bit lower to get to the handlebars. Now, whilst that's adjustable in both positions, it is a little bit more aggressive in the position and, and that's to get to a more aerodynamic, more ergonomic road riding position, which is certainly more efficient uh, and going to translate to better performance for the customer. So that's the first difference. You also notice that the, the length of the bike is a little bit longer in the top tube there, again to, to create a little bit more lower position for the, for the handlebars. And we touched on the wheelbase before, this bike has now become a little bit shorter. Uh, and the, the benefit of that is the bike becomes uh, more, more sharp in its handling. So for higher speeds and cornering and, and uh, maybe competitive type of riding, uh, that, that certainly adds a lot of benefit for the handling of the, of the, the, the rider because uh, the bike's going to perform much better. The other thing too, you look at uh, the frame uh, and, and certainly to get a close up of the frame you'll notice that there's a lot more uh, detail that's gone into the tubing. Now this particular bike is still an aluminium frame. Uh, but a much higher grade of aluminium than you'll find on a recreational bike. And the benefit of that is that it's going to be a lot lighter and a lot stiffer. Uh, and the shaping that's done to the tubing provides the ability to shave weight out where it's not required. So, so here in the centre of the frame where there's not a lot of st uh, the tube, where there's not a lot of stress on the, on the tube, they're able to make it quite thin, help shave a little bit of weight off the frame. And you do that on every single tube of the bike and obviously as a result the frame becomes much lighter. So that's the first uh, differences with the frame. Uh, obviously we've talked before about the carbon fork. That's now a, a, a fitted item on all these bikes at this level because they're you know, on the bike for a little bit longer. They're looking for higher performance. They don't want to have a bike that's uh, fighting them. You know, so the carbon fork is a standard feature. Uh, the, the other difference that we'll touch on uh, is that uh, the gearing. So on, on the previous recreational bikes, we had a, we had a triple front chain ring. Uh, on this type of bike, we're going back to the double uh, because you know, typically the, the rider's capability and, and, uh, and fitness at this level is certainly supportive of you know, not having the, the triple chain ring. Uh, also too, it adds a bit of weight. So we're trying to pull the weight of the bike back and make it a little bit lighter so the bike performs that bit better. On this level of bike though, it's interesting to, to, to provide some assistance for the rider, particularly in the hills. They actually do go to a smaller diameter chain ring than you will find on other road bikes. So uh, traditionally on a road bike, you, you'll find a, a 53 outer tooth and a 39 inner tooth. On this bike, they have a, a 50 outer tooth and a 34 inner tooth. So what that's doing is it's just slightly reducing the, the load, makes it a little bit easier for climbing the hills. Uh, and for someone that maybe isn't, at a, a very high level of fitness, you know, still allows them to push those big rings without, uh, without fear of burning out too quick. Um, obviously going to much higher grade components on the bike, which again is about trimming out any, any uh, type of weight that's unneeded, 
obviously adding to the performance of the bike. So the gears are crisper, the brakes work better, the wheels are lighter, they're a lot smoother. And obviously, you know, the sole aim of all those things is not only, as we said before, to make the bike faster, obviously more durable because the bike's going to be ridden a lot more, uh, you know, for this type of rider doing a lot more kilometres. So they're looking for something that's reliable, works well, uh, and, and obviously lasts without having to spend a lot of money to keep it going. So sport level bike, you know, someone that's riding maybe a couple of times a week and maybe looking at doing their first level triathlon or, or road race, um, you know, or for someone that's just looking for a really nice bike that's a bit lighter, a bit faster than say what we looked at in the recreational bike. Still not uh, aggressive in its position, it's still got a comfort focus, but at the end of the day, a lot more performance based than the recreational. We've gone through the recreational style of road bike, which is for someone that's getting into road cycling or maybe the first road bike. Uh, we looked at the sport level bike, which is getting a little bit more performance orientated, um, certainly for someone that's riding a little bit more regularly and longer distances. Now we're going to look at the performance of a road bike, which obviously is that the top level aims solely at uh, being the, the best performing type of bike that it can be, uh, and, and certainly aimed at someone that's riding very regularly, whether they're competing or, or not, uh, but certainly someone that's doing a lot of riding, looking to get the most out of their bike and their riding. Remembering some of the differences we looked at with the, uh, the, the recreational or sport level road bike, the first thing that stands out with this one is the, uh, is the saddle to handlebar height difference. So you can see straight away that uh, the handlebars are much lower on the front of the bike on this particular style. Uh, obviously again, you know, they are adjustable, both handlebar and saddle height, but the, the standard position is, is, is much more aggressive, which is again, getting that cyclist down into a much lower much more aggressive position which certainly helps with aerodynamics, certainly helps with ergonomics uh, to get more power through the pedaling stroke. So having that uh, position obviously aids performance straight away. The bike will become longer in the top tube length of the bike which again gives a little bit more room to get down lower in the front of the bike. And, and the wheelbase, you, you'll certainly note that this rear wheel is slammed right in as far as it can come into the back of the bike and the idea of having that uh, wheeling closer uh, is that the shorter the length of the rear end of the bike, the better it accelerates because it's stiffer, less, less material there for it to flex. Uh, so it, it obviously stiffens the bike up significantly, but also the ha handling. So on a bike like this, it's, it's razor sharp. You know, it's able to handle you know, high speed cornering you know, with 100% with confidence for the cyclist. So for someone new to road cycling, they might be a bit uh, daunted by that because of the fact that it is very fast. And, 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 and uh, you know, a common question we might get is that a bike has a bit of you know, a bit of, bit, of, bit of nervousness at speed. Well, that's just probably getting used to that style of bike because it is really aimed at that performance level. So much so that the fork on this particular bike is actually dead straight. Uh, on, on some of the low level bikes, the fork is curved to then sort of add a little bit more slowness to the front end of the steering of the bike. This one, it's not about that, it's about slamming that fork dead straight to make sure that the steering is really fast and, and really stable, uh, no matter the speed. The other thing you'll notice about the frame on this particular bike, so we've covered off the geometry and it's significantly different, uh, but looking at the frame shape, now this one is very different in its shape and this because this one uh, goes to being a carbon fibre frame. So we talked about the benefits before of a carbon fibre fork on lower spec bikes where it, it softens the ride through dampening a lot of the road shock and vibration out of the bike. Um, but, uh, and so if you think about the whole frame now is, is actually carbon fibre, carbon fibre is incredibly uh, desirable as a, as a bicycle frame material because of the fact that it can be handmade to get the most out of the, the frame for the rider. So the, the benefit of uh, a carbon fiber frame first is incredibly light. A bike like this will be uh, you know, sort of around seven kilos in weight as opposed to maybe nine kilos for a, a, a sport level bike and, and maybe about 12 kilos for a, a recreational bike. So the bike obviously being much lighter will, will perform much better and climb those hills a lot easier. The, the stiffness of the frame is also a lot different, so it's a lot higher and obviously the stiffer the frame is, the more power is transmitted into the pedals through into the bike to make sure that you're, you're smashing along the road as fast as you can. So you can see here the tube profiles of the bike in the front triangle, particularly the bottom section of the bike, very, very oversized, right down to the chain stays here along the, where the chain runs. And the idea of having the big down section on the bottom half of the bike is that that's where a lot of the, the stress uh, 
of, of the, the cyclist pedaling and, and, and driving through the, the bike uh, goes, goes on. So the idea is to make that big and oversized obviously stiffens that area up to make sure the bike's as efficient as, efficient as it can be. Up top though, the bike's a little bit more Bit, bit more defined, a little bit lighter in its in its tube profile, a little bit skinnier, uh, and also with some curvature. And those curves add a little bit of compliance, so it softens the ride up a little bit more. So whilst the bottom of the bike makes sure that the frame is very, very stiff and very fast, uh, the, the top of the bike is designed to be a little bit more forgiving, so it softens that ride up a little bit. So again, for someone that's riding, you know, three, four, five hours out on the on the road, they're not having to fight the bike for that whole time, so they can perform better for longer and get, get most out of their cycling. So really to cover off the frame, that's probably the, the main benefits. You know, to, to look at a carbon fibre frame, you, you probably really want to get up close and have a look at some of the detail that does go into the frame. Um, you know, differences too, you can see that uh, on some of the tubes, like the, the seat tube here and the seat post, uh, even the fork too, there's a slight aerodynamic shape to those, those tubing uh, to try and cut through the wind with, with uh, as much efficiency as possible. So again, translating to better performance for the rider. So a very big difference from where we've been in those lower level bikes to this type of bike in terms of performance capability. Uh, looking at uh, other components, obviously the gearing, uh, you know, you step up in the level of gears depending on how much riding the, the consumer's doing, uh, but obviously you go into the bigger size front chain ring. So we talked before, the recreational bike has three front chain rings, triple front chain rings, uh, which, are, which are quite recreational focus. The sport level bikes typically have smaller front chain rings, which only two of them, but uh, smaller in size to offer you know, some assistance in, in, in some of the hilly terrain and the like. Whereas with this one, again, it's all about speed and performance. So we're going to the bigger size front chain ring being 53. The, the, the small one is a 39. And then on the rear here where we've got 10 rear cogs, so, you know, quite a significant range of gearing. The gearing, again, is quite tight. So again, all about speed, all about performance uh, in, in the gearing. Um, to look at some of the other features of the bike, we can look at the wheels. Uh, and you can see here that this wheel, uh, unlike some of the other wheels we looked at earlier, is a little bit deeper in its profile. So the benefit of that uh, is that again, it adds a little bit more aerodynamics to the bike. So, you know, if the wheel while it's spinning is a little bit more aerodynamic, it's going to help cut through the wind that little bit better and help the rider attain a, a much higher average speed. So looking at the bike in all, uh, you know, we've noticed the weight, we've noticed the stiffness, we've noticed the performance, we've noticed the gearing. Uh, you know, we notice the wheels and, and again, it's really aimed at uh, being a bike that, you know, to ride a lot, to look at competing, whether it's in triathlon or on the road, uh, you know, it's going to get the most out of, you know, give the rider the most out of their cycling and perform at that top level.